How's it going, guys? Andrew here with Justified EDC, and uh, bringing back the three quick fix blade reviews thing. Uh, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's four, but uh, just kind of like grouping a couple fix blades together to do one big review video on. Uh, the reason I do this, if you're unfamiliar, is usually uh, sometimes I'll do it if uh, I get some blades in that just kind of aren't really for me. Um, and I don't have a whole lot to say about them, but I still want to give you guys my thoughts. Uh, that's not the case with these. Uh, I actually really like all three of these, um, but just in general, fixed blades, there's not as much to talk about in reviews as there is with folders because, you know, folders is more moving parts. There's different tolerances and stuff that have to be right. So there's usually a little bit more to talk about. Fixed blades, it's pretty straightforward. How are the ergos? Uh, how uh, is the geometry, how do they hold up, that kind of thing. So we're going to uh, fit all three of these into this video. I'll try not to make it too long as I sometimes do, uh, but we'll still go through all the things that we normally go through for fixed blade reviews, just kind of all in one video. So uh, before we get started, I have to thank the sponsor of the channel, Auxiliary Manufacturing. Uh, Mike over at Auxiliary Manufacturing uh, has been an awesome supporter of the channel. Uh, if you don't know, he makes custom USA-made fixed blades like this pocket bowie or this Sumi model, um, but he's got a bunch of different models, a lot of different price points, and uh, just kind of designs for everyone. So if you guys are interested in some USA Made fixed blades, which you probably are, because you clicked on this video, which all three of these are USA Made fixed blades, um, go check him out. I will leave links in the description to his Instagram and his YouTube and his uh, website and all that good stuff. And thank you as always for, to Mike for sponsoring the channel. Uh, so we will get right into these. Which one should we do first here? Uh, you know, let's go, let's go, uh, the ones that, the one that I had the longest, uh, to the one that's more recent. So this is the one that I've had the longest, uh, and I've been putting this review off because I had sent a blade off to Josh. The, I should intro this first. Uh, this is the Offensive Industries Fenrir L. Um, and I had sent another Offensive Industries blade back to Josh to get, uh, new scales on it. And, uh, there was a mix up in the mail. And so I'm, I'm I don't want to wait any longer. I want to give this guy the, uh, the fair review that it deserves. So we're going to go ahead and review it. Um, so we're going to do size and all that good stuff. Let me get you a weight real quick right here off the bat because I always forget to do that. So the weight without the sheath, we are coming in at just at three ounces exactly. And then with the sheath, you're looking at 4.5 ounces. So not very heavy at all. Very easy to carry. Yeah, we get this out of the way. All right. So specs, Overall blade length, you are looking at just under three inches, or just under uh, two and a half inches, about two and a half inches of cutting length, about three inches of blade if you count that ricasso. Your overall is just going to be over six and a half inches. Your thickness on your blade is eighth inch blade stock. This is a full tang Nitro V knife. And then it has a jute wrapped handle that has been epoxied, so it's hard. Uh, if you guys are familiar with jute, it's not just you wrap the twine around and then it's all loose and stuff like that, but this has been epoxied, so it's nice and hard, doesn't move around at all. And then he does this kind of like Oreo text, uh, pattern here where he burns two ends and leaves one natural. So I like that. Some people don't, but I think it looks pretty cool. Very comfortable ergonomics. Uh, you have a flat grind on here coming down to a nice secondary bevel about mid-height saber grind, no swedge or anything like that, no jimping, just a very straightforward knife. And then the sheath here is Kydex. If you're not familiar with Offensive Industries, he makes these deep carry pocket sheaths. You'll see them on all of his knives, um, as well as a lot of other makers that we'll get into, like Auxiliary and, and uh, BW and all that kind of stuff. But ambidextrous sheaths, so the knife can be inserted in either direction. And they are a friction fit, so no rattle, no play, good retention, but still very easy to get out of the sheath, both in your reverse grips and in your standard just utility grips. So those are your specs, weight, all that good stuff. Um, I know some people ask to get a length of when it's in the sheath. So when you're in your sheath, you're right at seven inches and the actual length of the sheath that you'll have in your pocket is right at five and a half, five and a half inches. Uh, so very easy to put in your pocket. Um, not too long like some of the deep carry sheets get. So this one in particular has the gray and the gum sole, but he did all kind of different patterns. So uh, getting into this, I have to bring out some other knives here and we're gonna, I'll, I'll do some size comparisons here, but I wanna bring out the other two Fenrirs in the Fenrir line as points of comparison. Because if you don't know, I have uh, reviews of both the M and the regular Fenrir on my channel. Um, and at some point I will do a whole video comparing all three, but just so you know, this is the full Fenrir family. 
I happen to have all gray Kydex to match and all in the Oreo pattern here. So the original Fenrir is this little guy here with the shorter handle and the shorter blade. The Fenrir M steps it up with the same blade length as the M or as the uh, standard, but with a longer full-size handle. And then the Fenrir L has the full-size handle and a longer blade, and this one happens to be a thicker stock. So if you look at the original Fenrir and the Fenrir M, they are 3 seconds blade stock. They're all Nitro-V, but this one is 3 seconds, and this is 8th inch. So, um, and we'll get into talking about that here. But just so you can see a comparison of the three, we'll put all three in their sheaths here so you can see them side by side. So in the pocket, that's what you're looking at. So that's the Fenrir family. If you're interested in these two, uh, go check out my channel. I have reviews on these two as well. Uh, just some other size comparisons here. Um, you know, we'll do size comparisons to all the knives at the end, uh, just so I don't have to keep pulling out the same knives over and over again. So we'll do size comparisons to all the knives at the end. So my thoughts on this. One, um, I really like the Fenrir L. It's a really good size. Again, that kind of, what was what did I say the overall was? Like six and a half inches. It's a really nice EDC-able size. You still get a full grip. For me, in all of my grips, I can get a four-finger grip on it, even in your saber grip where you have to choke back a little bit. So hammer grip, saber grip, edge in, forward, reverse grip, edge in, reverse grip, edge out. It works very well. Although it is not a perfectly neutral handle, there is some curve to it. It is still very easy to do those kind of edge in grips that I like for defensive use or for um, chest lever stuff for bushcraft. So it's still very easy to do those kind of grips. Um, Nitro V, if you're not familiar, is a very tough stainless steel. Um, you get a lot of the toughness that you get from a lot of your carbon and your tool steels, uh, but it is still stainless. Um, in general, Nitro V doesn't hold an edge super long, but the heat treat that offensive industries and BW and auxiliary and all of them kind of share, uh, the Nitro V really holds up well. I, at some point, and I, I don't know if it's kind of like an industry thing where they're, they're kind of trying to keep that formula to themselves, but at some point I'm going to ask and see like what HRC they're treating this at and if they're doing cryo or anything like that, uh, just to get a better idea of what they're running the steel at, but whatever they do, it holds up really, really well. Uh, Nitro V is very easy to sharpen. Um, it's very easy to maintain, but it's very tough. And whatever they're doing on here, the edge retention is pretty solid. I'd put it on par with something like uh, maybe like your older Super Steels, kind of like similar. Okay, in my experience, the Nitro V with this specific heat treat, with this geometry on offensive and BW9 and stuff like that, very similar edge retention to something like S30V. So. In my experience, that's what it's been like, but much easier to sharpen and your edge doesn't chip out. You still have a pretty good thickness on the tip. So any kind of tip uh, work that you have to do, or if you're gonna stab into something, hit rib or something like that, your tip should hold up. I always do tip tests where I stab into wood, pry both ways, uh, it held up fine. And I use this for all my different EDC tests. As you can see, there's plenty of wear on that blade. It's been sharpened once or twice. Really liked this blade, very comfortable. Uh, the jute wrap is very grippy. Um, so even if your hands get wet or bloody or whatever, uh, this is going to stay in your hand really well. I, I just really like this design overall. One thing I would like to see on this model is the 330 seconds blade stock, like on the Fenrir M and the regular Fenrir. Um, the eighth inch blade stock does provide you with some additional strength. And I know when I was talking to Josh about that, he said that he kept it at eighth inch for this longer one, because the longer your blade gets, the more it tapers out towards the tip and the thinner your tip gets. Uh, so he was worried about the kind of fragility of the tip if he did this in 330 seconds. I think with the Nitro V and the correct grind, this could still be plenty tough and you get a little bit more uh, sliciness on that 330 seconds blade stock. Because again, you do have just kind of a mid-height flat grind. It doesn't come to the thinnest edge, but it does cut very well. But the 330 seconds models cut even better. So that would really be my only nitpick with this. Um, other than that, everything is super solid. I really enjoyed carrying this, and this probably is my favorite of the Fenrir line. Uh, I go back and forth between this and the M uh, just because I like how thin the M is, but I think if I got one of these in 330 seconds, this would probably be my favorite of that Fenrir line. So that is the Offensive Industries Fenrir. We are going to move on to the second one, and uh, remember, I will do a size comparison at the end. So if you're interested in that, stick around. Next one. Uh, sticking with the sheath uh, kind of theme here, this is the BW Knives Tepes. Um, and I, I, Brad, I hopefully I'm saying that correctly, um, but uh, I know it's after like Vlad Tepes, Dracula. 
um, kind of like the coffin nail kind of inspiration. Um, and just so you know, uh, the offensive industries, I forgot to mention, offensive industries, one guy, I think he has a shop helper to every once in a while, but making knives out of his home uh, in the USA. So these are truly custom USA made fixed blades. Same thing with here, BW Knives, uh, Brad uh, is making uh, full handmade custom fixed blades in the US. Um, Brad and Josh know each other as well as a couple other makers, but again, another custom USA made fixed blade. The price on the offensive industry, since I forgot to mention it, uh, is $245, which is a nice segue into this. This also runs $245. Another similarity, as well as the sheath, because Josh does the sheaths for, for BW, uh, is this is also in Nitro V. So again, a kind of similar vein, you have 8th inch uh, Nitro V steel, a kind of mid-height saber, a little bit higher than the Fenrir, a little bit higher just because the blade is broader, uh, flat grind, saber grind, whatever you want to call it, down to a very nice edge. Oh. Okay, I thought my camera died there, but I just got a low battery uh, notification, so we got to keep moving. Um, uh, Brad does some of the nicest edges that I get right from the factory. They're just really, really nice. I've had to strop this a couple times, but I haven't needed to sharpen it yet. That's one thing about Nitro V is it strops very, very easily. It's kind of harder to see some of the wear on here, but I have used this plenty. Kind of up here towards the Ricasso, you can see what the finish looks like without being used, and then it kind of shines up and gets some of those wear marks as you use it. There's his maker's mark. And this one also has some jimping, which for this design, with not having a guard or anything like that, the jimping is really nice, kind of locks your hand into some of those utility cuts in your forward grips. Similarly, very neutral handle. So all of your standard grips work really well. So you get your saber grip, your hammer grip, edge in, reverse grip, edge out, reverse grip, edge in. So same thing uh, for your edge in grips because it's very uh, um, uh, neutral. You're able to do those reverse grips very easily, um, which I like a lot. Uh, one thing on this handle here, so this is a uh, jute wrap, under wrap, and then the, uh, I think it's like shoelace or something, over wrap, again, epoxied, so it's hard, and it doesn't move around on you, very grippy. This kind of handle where it flares up instead of flaring down to have more thickness behind here, this is definitely built more for your reverse grips. Not only for uh, drawing the knife, your hand kind of comes up here and then stops at that nub. It's very easy to draw. Also, if you're going to be stabbing this into something like uh, Libre styles, um, it's very easy to retract because you have that kind of bulbous end here that your hand catches on. It's very easy to retract the blade. That being said, when it tapers down like this, uh, you have a little bit less thickness down here towards the Ricasso. So if you're doing any kind of push cuts like this, you just have a little bit less for your hand to hold on to here. It's not quite as comfortable. That being said, most of my utility cuts comes in like a saber grip, which works very well for kind of uh, draw cuts as opposed to push cuts or pinch grips, with this, which this also works very well in. Um, I do those grips very, uh, very often for my utility stuff. So it works very well. I did talk to Brad. He said he's working on revising the Tepe's handle a little bit uh, to have a little bit more thickness down here for that exact reason that I just mentioned. So constantly improving. Your uh, blade here has a very subtle clip point to it. It very much behaves uh, in use like a drop point, which is cool because uh, I, I really like the shape of clip points. I really like how it thins the tip up, but it still behaves very similar to a drop point where it's very easy to get down to that tip. And the other thing here that uh, if you notice here, if I line this up on the center line, the blade does angle up slightly. It's very reminiscent of some of the old like fighting bowies you would see where they are meant to be held in that uh, forward grip edge in. Uh, so they kind of do like uh, flick cuts and uh, or snap cuts, excuse me. Um, stuff like that. So very reminiscent of those Bowies. I know that he took a lot of uh, inspiration from like coffin nails and stuff like that. It's with the kind of coffin-esque or neo-coffin kind of shape. Um, I really like this knife a lot. The uh, sheath here, similar to the Offensive Industries. Well, it is an Offensive Industries. Just plain black, but same thing. Deep carry goes in both directions. Retention is solid. No rattle. No play. Retention is good, but still very easy to draw out of the sheath in any of your standard grips. So that is the BW Knives Tepes, and uh, I've really been enjoying using that. And we were gonna move on to the last one. Oh, I'm sorry, I totally forgot to do 
uh, the uh, lengths and measurements and stuff like that at the beginning. See, this is why I do this kind of stuff, and I'll pull the scale out here too. I forget things as I'm doing these videos because I don't script anything. So your blade length is right at three inches, goes about three and a quarter if you count the Ricasso, and then your handle length is about, let's see, one, two, three, and three quarters to four inches, which is just about perfect for me. Overall length here, looking at right over seven inches. In the sheath, you're looking at right about seven and a half, and then your length in the pocket is right at six inches. This is kind of the max that I like to have about six inches. Six and a half is kind of pushing it, but six is really solid. So there's that, and then I will grab the scale here to give you a weight. There we go. So without the sheath, we are looking at 3.2 ounces, so very similar to the Fenrir L, and then with the sheath, we are looking at 4.6. So there you go. Again, not very heavy, pretty easy to carry. Let's move on to the last knife here. This here is the Knives by Nuge Wicket XL. Um, this is the newest one that I've had, but I still used it a decent amount. Um, and I wanted to get this out for him because he had sent it to me and uh, it was kind of in my phase of not doing videos. So I wanted to get this out. Um, this, and I will pull out the original Wicket here as a point of comparison. So if you're familiar with Knives by Nudes, you'll know the Wicket. This is what that model was based on. Very small, EDCable knife, kind of three finger grip, very small, very capable, handy little knife. The Wicket XL next to it is just a sized up version of the Wicket. So all the same design cues as you can see, but just in a bigger form factor. Same stock, same steel. These are both in Nitro V. Just that very broad utilitarian drop point, same maker's mark, handle shape, all that stuff is the same. So I will get that out of the way here and talk about the XL. So this is his like semi-production model. Um, and it is, uh, so the way I understand it is he gets uh, water jet cut blanks and then he does, he grinds the bevels, he puts the edge on, he does the finish work, the laser engraving. Um, and then on his customs, he does the scales. These are CNC cut scales though. So if you're familiar with his normal ones, you'll usually see like brass tubes where he's put the scales on himself. Um, but these are CNC cut scales. These are in micarta. They've got some texturing to them and these are bolt on. So you could theoretically remove these and do a handle wrap or you could get a different set of scales to put on it. I really like the textured micarta. It's very grippy. It feels nice in the hand. The texturing is nice. I'm glad he didn't just go with like flat micarta. Um, and you definitely fill the hand a lot more with the XL. You can get a full four finger grip, even choke back in your saber grip. You can get your pinky on there. So this works in your hammer grip, saber grip, it is comfortable enough. You can do your, kind of your edge in, kind of do your reverse chest lever stuff. Reverse grip, edge out works. Reverse grip, edge in doesn't really, but again, this isn't really a defensive blade. This is more of an EDC or a companion knife to your outdoors knife, something like that. So you have uh, a full flat ground and a full tang Nitro V blade. Uh, I believe this is eighth. Inch. I want to say this is eighth inch, but I'm not sure off the top of my head. It might be slightly thinner than eighth inch, and my calipers are uh, out of commission right now, so I can't really check. But around eighth inch, you know, I'll pull out what I know to be eighth inch here. We can run it up against them. So it is a little bit thinner than eighth inch. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but just so you know. And this one has a full flat grind on it. It's a lot more slicey than the last two we talked about. Uh, this one does have a sharpening choil if you're into that kind of thing. The edge came very sharp. Um, you can kind of see it. You get the edge in there. There you go. A little bit thinner of an edge bevel, but it cuts well enough. I would like to see the edge angle laid back a little bit on these, uh, but not the biggest deal in the world. Again, comes up to a very nice acute tip, which again, you're not using this for, <coughs> excuse me, defensive use. You don't have to worry about that as much but it gives you very fine control over that tip. The sheath is just your standard fold over taco style sheath. The, the uh, retention is excellent, no rattle, no play. Retention is super solid, pops off really, really nice, clicks in really, really solid. And I just have a soft loop on this so I can kind of carry it horizontally on my belt. Just really, really solid companion knife. 
Um, Josh does make some uh, deep carry sheets for these, so if you're interested in that, you can hit him up directly. I think they were selling them with them at one point, but you can contact Josh and he can make you one for this if you're interested. Again, Nitro V. Uh, he does make some of these in Magna Cut as well, and some of his Scandi Grind ones are in uh, 1095, I believe. Um, but you can get these in either the Wicket or the XL. You can get them in Magna Cut, 1095, Nitro V. You can get them in all different kinds of scales or wraps or whatever. There's an option out there for anyone. Um, the price on these is 340 for this specific model, which that's really my only complaint about this is I think 340 is a little bit high. Um, now, saying that, his knives are really popular right now. They're in a lot of high demand. Uh, he got his stuff on some channels like Best Damn ADC and stuff like that. So people are really crushing on these knives right now, which is awesome for him. I'm super happy. And they're selling. Every time he posts drops, people buy them up really quick. So, hey, if they're selling for that, I'm happy uh, for him. Personally, I think 340 is a little bit high um, for the semi-production and in Nitro V. If this was in Magna Cut, I'd say, okay, you know, Magna Cut's hot right now. It's, it, it is an expensive steel uh, to buy. It's harder to work with, so I get it. Uh, but for Nitro V, it's a little bit high. I usually don't like to see Nitro V uh, like over $300. Um, but again, it is what it is. And if that's the pricing he's figured out and people are buying them, that's cool. I just personally would like to see it a little bit lower, especially since it's kind of like a semi-custom, semi-production uh, design at this point. But, you know, other than that, if this is a design that you're into, you really can't go wrong with these. They're really, really well made. Uh, again, USA made by one guy over New Jersey, uh, custom fixed blades. So can't really complain too much. Uh, let me pull out all three knives here and we'll run through some size comparisons real quick. Oh, sorry. I forgot to get you uh, your weights and your lengths and stuff on this. Again, I forget. So blade length is right about two and a half inches of sharpened blade length, about two and three quarters back to the edge or uh, back to the edge of the handle. Your handle length grip area is about one, two, three and a half inches. And then your overall is about six and a half. Again, since this isn't going in a sheath, it doesn't matter quite as much, but we'll still give you a length with the sheaths right about seven, a little bit over. And then your weight here without the sheath is coming in at 3.3. Again, very similar to the other two. And then with the sheath and the soft loops coming in right at 4.6. So exactly the same as the Tepe's actually. So let's pull all three knives out here and we'll do some quick size comparisons to some other things. <coughs> Sorry, I had something in my throat. I don't know if I'm getting sick or something. All right. So, uh, let's see. What do I have out here already? So, the Knives by Nuge Wicket, the smaller version. Here is the Auxiliary Manufacturing Pocket Bowie. And let's pull some other stuff out here then. Here is, pull these out of here. Here is the Crossroad Custom Orlock, a much larger knife. And we're on the th well, now while that we're on the theme of larger knives here, what I'm carrying today is the Sosby Blades 5-inch Cub, which is brand new. I don't think anyone has these yet, but there's the 5-inch Cub. Put this back, put the, put the custom back. Here is the BW Knives Erebus Short, kind of very similar in the vein of these three knives. And the overall size and let's pull out some other production stuff for the fixed blades here is the station nine i think this is the number nine actually here is the uh demco knives oh what is this the armager four again another slightly larger knife And then let's do some folders as we move these out of the way here. Some folders. Here is the Spyderco. Oh, I'm getting another battery notification. We got to wrap this up quick. Here's the Spyderco Resilience next to these three. Kind of turn this here so we can get that fully on screen. Here's the Spyderco Endella, which is the midsize between the Delica and the Endura. Here is a Buck 112. Kind of a classic. Here is the Kershaw Blur, another classic. <coughs> Man, I don't know what's going on with me today. 
for your traditional guys here, here's a full-size trapper. Happens to be a K-bar, but your cases and all their queens and all that good stuff, full-size trapper. And let's do one more here. The Buck 110, a true American classic that everyone should know. And because it's so popular right now and I can't find it, <laughs> Here is the, Mil the uh, Milwaukee Fastback. So that should give you a really good idea of some of the sizes and stuff like that. Guys, I hope you enjoy this style of video, kind of moving through a couple fixed blades so I don't drone on about the same thing over and over again. Um, if you have any questions about these that I didn't answer in this video, please leave them down in the comment section. I will leave links to these three uh, makers. Uh, if I can tag right to the knife, I will. If not, I'll just link their pages. If you have any questions about these or anything that I missed or anything like that, makers, if you're watching this and I missed anything, feel free to chime in in the comments and correct me. Um, but always, guys, thank you to Auxiliary, for, uh, Auxiliary Manufacturing for sponsoring the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.